This is truly groundbreaking. Groundbreaking. Copilot for Power Apps is here and it's going to change the game for how you create Power Apps. Where was this seven years ago when I first started building Power Apps? I don't know, but I'm glad it's here today and I'm gonna show you how it's done right after this. That's right, it finally happened. We have a co-pilot for building Power Apps applications. This is using AI to be able to allow us to enter in natural language, tell it what kind of app we want, and it will build the app and the backend database for us to store our data. Let's see how it works. Now, when we go to the Power Apps homepage, we'll have this co-pilot mode right here at the top of the page. So if we're building a new application, we can simply describe what we want the application to do and let the co-pilot do all the hard work for us. I wanna build an application to be able to manage visitors to my location. So I'll say something like, I want to track visitors to my office. Now I'll just click send and the co-pilot will go to work. Behind the scenes is figuring out what backend table you need to be able to store all the information for your app. So what it did is just recommend a Dataverse table structure for me based off of what I said I wanted. So I can see it's recommended several columns for me already. Visitor ID, name, age, gender, the purpose for why they're there, contact number, arrival and departure time, duration and status. Virtually everything that I would need for some kind of visitor check-in system. And it's even went ahead and populated some sample data to get me started. So now if I wanna test out the functionality in my app, I don't have to worry about going in and adding sample data. The Copilot is doing that for us. But this isn't all I can do. If there's something here that we either don't need or maybe something that's missing, we can leverage the Copilot on the right hand side to continue interacting with it and have it fine tune the solution for us. We simply describe what we want changed. Like maybe I don't care about the person's age, so I'll say remove age field. The Copilot will go to work, reevaluate this backend Dataverse table for us, and there you go, the age column is gone. Now I'm doing all this without even having to touch Dataverse. Another thing I might wanna do, maybe instead of having one column for name, I wanna split it out by first and last name. So I'll ask it to split the name field to first and last name columns. Let's so thinking a bit here. We'll see if it's able to handle this for us. And there you go, it did. Now we have a first name and a last name, but we can see as we do these tweaks with the Copilot, it did introduce an error. So it's letting us know that a text primary name column is required. Now apparently that column that we had it change was the primary column. So we can simply interact with the copilot and say make last name field the primary field. And we'll see if this resolves the error that it introduced when we made that last change. It looks like it did. Now I'm pretty satisfied with what we have here. So now all we have to do is click create an app and this will take that data model that it suggested for us and created for us in Dataverse and create a fully functioning Power Apps Canvas application for us based off of that data. There we have it. Now we have a simple two screen application. Now the first thing you'll notice that's different is not only did we leverage this Copilot to create the app for us, which is amazing in and of itself, but now we have a native integrated Copilot in our Power App for us. So now the users of our application can interact with the data in our app with a Copilot also. And this is all possible through a new native Copilot control inside of Power Apps. So now the homepage of our application, if we play this, allows the user to be able to interact with the data. And it even suggests some things that you might wanna see about the data. Like what's the average duration of visits in this data set? We can do that, the Copilot will go out, look at all the data that we have stored in that Dataverse table, and it will do this calculation for us to let us know that the average duration is an hour. You can imagine how this will really change the game and how we interact with Power Apps alone. Rather than having to add in all kinds of complicated filters and sorting and grouping, we could leverage this Copilot for a lot of that stuff and encourage our users to interact with it this way. But of course, we have the normal mode of interacting with the data as well. What this application did for us is to create this landing screen with Copilot, but we also have this tab for visitor details. So this is that traditional experience that we would expect in our Power App. But another thing that you might notice that looks different here is the look and feel. 
It's leveraging new fluent UI controls to streamline the look and feel of our Power Apps applications. Now, as a reminder, I didn't do anything. I didn't have to go to file new app. I just told this co-pilot that I wanted an app to track visitors to my location and it did all of this for me. I have this screen here where I can have a gallery on the left-hand side and navigate across the items that are stored in that table and see all the details as well as add new items. If I click new record, I have a new form here to the right where I can add in new items here. So I'll just put in some information. We'll just see if it works. We'll fill in some date time values, click on that check mark, and now that data is added to Dataverse. And of course it includes some search capability for us as well. So if we wanted to find a specific item, like the record that I just added, we could search and filter that gallery. And what makes this even better, as if it can get any better, is it's responsive out of the box because it's leveraging containers. So if I were to scale this down, you see the app adjust accordingly to how much I scale it down. So if I had this phone optimized view, I could click on any of these objects and then it would show the details. So now we can truly have one application that works both natively on mobile and desktop. So if you're starting from scratch with your Power Apps, this is truly transformational. I don't think I can stress enough how much this is changing the game for how we build applications with Power Apps. So now not only can we build an app just by telling it what we want, but we can leverage this in addition to the other AI functionality that we already had inside of Power Apps, like Power Apps Ideas. If I needed to make any tweak to this application, like say change how this gallery is being displayed or filtered, I can leverage Power Apps Ideas, which has been in Power Apps for a while now, use natural language to tell it how I want to see the data and not have to worry about knowing the ins and outs of PowerFX to make that happen. This is really breaking down barriers and enabling so many more people to build applications with Power Apps. So you might be wondering though, this looks cool, but what if I have an existing application that maybe I want to add in some of these cool AI features in, like maybe this AI co-pilot widget to be able to search and filter my information? Well, you can do that too. So I have this application that I actually built three years ago to help me manage my events. It gives me this great experience where I can browse across the days and look at different sessions that we have for the events for our conference. So I can dive into any one of these, see all the details about the event. Now for an application like this, this could really benefit from that co-pilot like experience embedded in the app so that users could ask it things like how many sessions are there related to Power Apps and all of that, rather than having to rely on the need of searching and filtering and browsing in the application. It could really be a big time saver and improvement to my users. Well, I can do this easily. Let me show you how. We'll open up this application in edit mode. And first thing I'll do is go over to the settings tab right here and go over to our upcoming features. So I want to scroll down to the bottom and make sure that we have the co-pilot component turned on. Once I have that, if we go to the insert tab and do a search for co-pilot, the brand new co-pilot control will show up that I can embed on any existing power app that I have. I have this placeholder landing screen that I would like to make the default screen for my app, which would include that Copilot widget so people can interact with that to find sessions. So all I'll do is go back to that insert button, find my Copilot control again, and click to add it onto the screen. Now, when I add this to the screen, the first thing I need to do is bind it to a data source. So this operates similar to a gallery in that you bind it to a single data source and then the Copilot is able to do all the intelligent stuff to be able to return information about that particular data set. For my use case, I just care about the sessions table, so I'll bind it to that. And this will give the users the ability to be able to search and find information about all of the sessions we have. I'm just gonna do some simple tweaking of this control, kind of make it fit on the screen well for me. Now, the moment of truth, let's give this a test. So I'm going to move this up so it's the default screen for my application and we'll give it a save. Now let's see what kind of things that it can do and return about my sessions table. Anytime you add this on, it's going to automatically get some context about your data source and recommend some things that you can ask it. So one of the things that I'm doing in this data source is I have a column called track where I'm tagging each of these sessions to align to a specific track like AI, biz apps, modern work, things like that. So I might want to use the first prompt that it's suggesting to know the most popular track in the data. And boom, there you go. The most popular track is modern work because it has two sessions. So it was able to easily return that information for me. And once we get a lot of conversation going, we have this nifty refresh button where we can kind of reset the conversation and go back and see those prompts. But let's ask it something unique here. Maybe I want to know how many Power App sessions there are. Let's see if it can handle that. 
And there you have it. So we have three Power App sessions and it gives me the name of those sessions. This will really add a lot of value to the users of my application and be able to get some quick information about the data. If you can't tell, I am super excited about these new capabilities. I expect that I'll have many more videos after this showing you some different ideas and things that you could do with this, but I wanted to make sure to make this video and give you a pretty good overview of the new capabilities that are there. So that's all that I have for you today, but I do wanna hear what you think about this. So drop a note in the comments and let me know what you think of this new capability and how you think you'll use it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, before you go, I have more videos on AI functionality. Check out some of these.